Good evening. Uh, today we're going to talk about counseling in the church. Uh, sometimes we think of um, counseling as a little bit, I don't know, we all just kind of have different understand and, and understandings of counseling. Um, and we have some, some pastors who, who try to counsel uh, without the appropriate training and they can end up doing things like making a spiritual issue out of a physical one. For instance, let's say someone has diabetes and a pastor might, under, might misunderstand that as being a spiritual issue when all that they really need is to go to the doctor. You know, um, there's really this different understanding. But one thing that we really need to emphasize is that Christians are called to be counselors to their fellow Christians. Um, we are called to encourage and to, and to help one another. Um, and that doesn't just go for the pastor. That goes for everyone in the church. Everyone should be uh, counseling one another, should be there for one another, uh, should listen to one another and help each other through different things. Um, also, I'd like to point out that there is a difference between counseling and advising. Um, and we'll get to that later, but um, I would... I would say it's never a good thing to pretend to be a doctor or pretend to be a psychologist. Um, you know, limit your counseling or your advising to the area that you know. For instance, uh, I'm a theologian, so I'm going to advise on theological issues, not on, not on whether you should go see a doctor or not. You know what I'm saying? And there are some things that are caused by spiritual warfare. I'm not denying that. Um, but there are also many things that have nothing to do with spiritual warfare. Uh, so I just want to give that kind of word of, I don't really know what, I can't think of the word right now, uh, word of caution, word of caution. Um, first off, if you're going to be counseling people um, in, the, in the church world, which as I said, we all should be, never stop learning. Um, never, never reach a place, and this really goes for anything, never reach a place to where you think that you have sufficient knowledge and um, you know everything and nobody else knows anything. Never, never reach that place. Um, always be willing to learn from other people, from experience, from books. Just always be willing to learn. Um, next, know what you're talking about. You know, um, when, you're, when you're helping somebody, someone through an issue, don't say something like, I know how you feel if you don't know how they feel, you know. Um, and if you don't know something about something, for instance, uh, if, you, if you're not married and you want to know about marriage and you don't want to get married to know about marriage, well, go out and learn about it. Um, don't, don't just settle, you know. Learn about the things that, you're, that is relevant. If you have someone in your church who you're trying to counsel who's having financial difficulties, Go and learn about that. Go and listen to them. Um, uh, at least read a book. I mean, do something, but try to understand where they're at. Um, try to understand what it is you're talking about. And if you don't understand what it is that you're counseling someone about, if you don't understand about what they're talking about, be honest. You know, I really have absolutely no idea how you feel about that. Uh, I know there's this, there's this one um, lady who I recently was talking to. Um, and she was talking about her husband, and I don't want to get into the details, obviously, but basically her husband wasn't necessarily um, around, and I told her straight out, you know, I have absolutely no idea what it's like to not have a spouse that is around, you know, um, and as much, as much studying as I have done since then um, about this issue, I still can't fully know because I've never really experienced it. So just kind of realizing my limitations. Uh, next, sympathize. When you're when you're trying to give counsel to another to another Christian of the, of the body, be compassionate towards them. You know, sympathize with them. Uh, listen to them. Obviously, they're sharing their emotions. They're sharing how they feel. They're a little bit torn up. And so what you want to do is you don't want to make them feel like terrible people. You want to help them where they are at, so that they can help themselves. The whole idea of counseling is helping someone help themselves. Advising is telling them what you think they should do. There's a clear difference. With counseling, it's like this. Let's say there's a person in the church and they are um, thinking about getting a divorce. First off, you want to sympathize with them. 
Okay, not necessarily pick sides, don't pick sides, but you want to sympathize with them. Um, if they are sorrowful, be sorrowful with them, mourn with them, you know, sympathize with them, um, you know, uh, be empathetic. There's a good word. Uh, it should, should just show that empathy towards them. Um, um, and and then here's the, the, the person who's, who's thinking about getting a divorce. Here's giving your advice. I don't think you should get a divorce because that's advising. Counseling is this. Okay, why don't you tell me about that? And you're listening to what they're saying. And then you're, you're there to listen to them, to help them, and to point them, help them point themselves in the right direction. Counseling is all about them. It's focused on them. Advising can be focused on you, them, God. It can be focused on whatever your main concern is. Uh, so just recognize that difference. Um, if, so if you're counseling, don't tell them what to do. Don't tell them what they should be doing. You know, well, I think you should do this. Because then if they do do that and it falls through, it's on you. It's your fault because you told them to do it. Um, the, only, the only case where I would say advise is if you are not in a counseling position where you could get sued or something like that. If you're just talking to someone as a friend and they ask for your advice or, or whatever and you just feel like, you know, you're, you were praying about this or something and you just kind of really feel strongly about something, then you would advise. But just be careful with that advice because just because you see something in a certain way doesn't mean that that is the right way. Um, obviously, I could expand on that, but we're trying, I'm trying to keep this kind of simple. Um, Uh, next, uh, listen to what they're saying. So many times when, so, when we're counseling people, we can just kind of breeze through what they said and then, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, and then tell them what to do, you know, instead of genuinely listening to them. When they are talking, pay attention. L listen to, to, the different, um, to the different ways they're speaking. Listen to the words, the attitude, the symbols that they're using with their hands, uh, facial expression. Really listen to them. Pay attention to what they're saying. Um, uh, this really helps well. After they've done, after they are done talking, reword what they said to them. There's many reasons for this. Number one, to show them that you were in fact listening. You know, that is the proof. Yes, I was listening. Two, it helps them to order their own thoughts because many times people who want counseling are in a place where they can't figure it out themselves. Either they don't really know how they feel, they don't know how to express themselves, whatever. So they're just going kind of crazy with their emotions and with their thoughts. And when you reword, it helps you clarify what they're saying and it helps them clarify what they're thinking. You know, like, for instance, they get to, okay, so I think if I heard right, you're saying that you're unhappy basically because you don't feel like your husband listens to you. Um, then they're, yes, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, also, a little little a red note here. Uh, be careful in your counseling. If you are a male counseling a female, make sure you're not alone. Make sure you're not in a place of becoming alone. Uh, make sure you don't get too familiar with their house. <laughs> make sure that, uh, you know, put up barriers here. Be smart with your counseling. Don't be in a room closed off. Don't get too comfortable with them. Don't be, don't comfort too much, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, we have we have a we have that work with the Holy Spirit where where the Holy Spirit comforts us and uses us to comfort other people, but just draw know where to draw the line between okay this is comforting and this is going too far you know just just be aware of that um, yeah and then for house visits really limit that either take someone with you or don't go when there's someone else there or just meet somewhere else in a more public place so that way you don't get used to the idea of going to their house. There's just little things, little safeguards that you can do to make sure that you don't fall into sexual immorality or to make sure that you don't make an issue where there isn't one. And remember, if something is perceived a certain way, sometimes it'll do more harm than actually doing that thing. For instance, well, maybe not more harm, but for instance, if someone thinks that they caught you in adultery and doesn't say anything about it, then they start to talk to other people maybe about it instead of to you. See, I'm saying it can cause this huge issue. Um, so uh, listen to them. Reword what they say. Really a great tactic to use. Um, use counseling tips. You know, take, take 
classes in college, read books, talk to counselors, you know, talk to different people, uh, talk to people who have been counseled, see what they, see what, see what helped and what didn't, you know, and then find out those counseling tips, like the rewording tip, and use them, utilize them. Um, use all the knowledge that you can grasp. Um, as I said, read books. Uh, there's a lot of good books about um, pa about counseling. There's one that I have actually. It's called uh, Christian Counseling. It's by Gary Collins. It's a very good book. I highly highly recommend it. Um, next, your stature. Uh, when you're when you're advising someone, keep your don't 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 cross your arms. Keep your hands to your side. It shows openness. Um, pick up on their cues. You know, look them in the eyes. Make sure you have the eye contact. Okay, yes, I'm listening. Don't be don't be paying attention to what's going on over here. Be paying paying attention to them. But then pay attention to their cues. If they show that they're getting uncomfortable by the direct eye contact, some people don't like it, then make sure to shift your eyes. Instead of looking directly at them, look down at the floor or whatever, but still focused in on them. Your body language is still saying, okay, I'm listening to you. Try not to make you nervous. So I'm not looking at your eyes, but I'm just, I'm here for you. I'm listening to you, you know. And like I said, don't cross your arms because that gives off the, off the symbol of, you know, either I'm in, being impatient or I don't really want to listen. Um, don't don't do nervous ticks. Don't you know twiddle your okay yes that 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 shows impatience and you don't want to show impatience when you're trying to counsel someone because you're trying to show availability. Um, so make sure your stature is one that welcomes conversation and that welcomes them. Um, know when it's appropriate to pray for them, when it's important to just listen, when it's important to you know etc. You know think about the different things and sometimes as you pray throughout the week. Uh, God will God will bring something up for you to say. Make notes and bring it back to them. You know, uh, there is confidentiality. Whatever is you say to that person, unless they authorize or they say, do not say to anyone else, and do not bring it back up unless they bring it back up to you. Uh, unless there's a special circumstance. I was praying and God told me to say this to you. But other than that, don't bring it back up unless they do. And do not ever betray their trust by talking to someone else about whatever you talk to. Next, don't criticize. Um, sometimes people who are in, in need of counseling will be thinking things that are wrong. Don't criticize them in that. They will find out on their own as they draw close to God. You're just trying to help them help themselves. You're not trying to fix all their problems. You're not trying to answer all their questions. You're trying to help them help themselves. You're being available to them. Um, as I said, don't share with anyone else what you guys talked over. Um, take classes. I already mentioned that. Be biblical. You know, say things that are biblical. Uh, react in a biblical way. Do not so do not support something that they say that is unbiblical. For instance, let's just let's say that they say, "I wanted to kill this guy," or no, that's a bad example. Uh, let's say, um, you know, I, I really want to keep doing drugs. Then don't say, "Yeah, yeah, I would too." No, don't say something like that because then when you say something like that, it gives them the idea that you're agreeing with them, whether you don't do or not. You know, uh, but at the same time, give cues that you are listening. Give cues that you are listening. You know, nod your head. Okay, I, I hear I hear what you're saying. Or say, um, I understand what you mean. But be careful not to say something that could be understood as, I am fully agreeing and endorsing what you are saying or doing. Be careful. It's about being objective. Counseling is all about being objective. Advising is about being subjective. But counseling is about being objective. You want to be, remember, you're a part of the body and you're there to support this person. You're helping them get from where they are to where they need to be. Um, so really just show that support to them. Support them. You know, obviously they're in need, in, in need of help, obviously, or else they wouldn't be, at, be, be, you know, when I talk to somebody about this. They're obviously in need of help. Support them. Don't do something to betray that trust. Um, Pray for them. Every time you are counseling someone, pray for them. Um, I'm sorry, pray with them. Pray with them every time that you're having, having that counseling. Open and close with prayer. Pray for them outside of the thing. And don't forget, when you say, I'm going to pray for you, genuinely pray for them. Um, like I said, follow, uh, follow their prompts. Um, Yeah, if they seem uncomfortable, try to do something that relaxes. it. Sometimes you can throw in a joke or something. Follow their prompts. Just see where they're trying to lead you. I already mentioned about eye contact. Um, I already not, I talked about nodding and confirming. 
Yes, I am listening to you. Um, okay, here's one last thing I want to say. Don't mold or play someone. When you're counseling someone, just because you are you have the right posture and you're saying these, these things does not mean that you are molding them or playing with their emotions. Um, it is simply saying that you are trying to respond to them. You're trying to make a positive situation because people will feel more comfortable and they will open up more when they feel that positive, um, I don't want to say energy because that makes it sound like, you know, I'm weird or something, nothing like that. But when they feel that positive attitude, that positive encouragement, it tells them to keep going. It helps them to open up. Um, so you're not doing these things so that you can somehow play them or, or toy with them. You're doing these things so that they will feel comfortable and that they'll be able to open up and feel like you're really listening to them. Um, and hopefully you really are genuinely listening to them, genuinely listening to them. Um, so just remember, people will respond negatively to different things and positively to other things. And pick up on that and try to reach people where they are at. at. We are all called to counsel uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ. I know I ran through, through this. I really just wanted to make it one video, not a series, um, just to kind of uh, help and give some advice on how to counsel. Um, God bless. I hope this video was uh, was of aid to you. Um, if there's some other thing that you would like me to talk about, uh, message me or comment me. Um, and I will see you guys on Monday, a new video, a uh, music video, a new music Mondays, starting on this Monday, that is the 15th. So I'll see you guys then. God bless.